Welcome to the Pacific Asia Curling Championships 2016 in Uisong, Korea. We're here at the Uisong Curling Center. Uisong is a town about four hours drive southwest of Seoul in the countryside, and our feature game today should be a cracker, a battle of the unbeatens. We're featuring China versus Japan. I'm Hans Fraunlob here with Sander Rolvag. And let's have a look at the team standings. As we mentioned, the Japanese are on top, along with Korea at 3-0. China, 2-0. New Zealand, Chinese Taipei, both at 2-1. Australia, Kazakhstan are both on 0-2. And, and Hong Kong and Qatar are both also looking for their first win. So let's meet the teams for today's game. Here is Team China. At lead is Zhang Jilang. Second is Zhou Chang. Third is Zhu Xiaoming. And the skip is Lu Rei. The alternate is Zhang Qinyu. And the coach is Marcel Rock. And for Team Japan today, at lead we have Kosuke Morizumi. At second, Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi. At third, Tetsuru Shimizu, and uh, skip, older brother of lead Kosuke, we have Yosuke Morizumi. Alternate is Kosuke Hirata and coach Hatomi Nagaoka. So we've met the teams and now we move inside the Wee Song Curling Center. Four sheets of action here in the men's event. Nine teams are competing. New Zealand has the bye in this draw. But our feature match today is China versus Japan. There we see Yosuke Morozumi, the Japanese skip. And Sander, what are you expecting? This should be a beauty. Yeah, it really should. Um, Japanese team uh, had a really good season last year, finished fourth at the Worlds. Uh, Chinese team, of course, very strong. They've uh, been better than Japan for a number of years, at, at least at the Pacifics. But uh, Lu Rei has had a couple of years off after the Olympics in Sochi and is just kind of returning to the game for the season. So he's maybe not at the top of his game. So I think it's, it's, it's a, bit of a bit of a coin toss right now for me. Okay, well, speaking of coin tosses, China has earned last rock in the first end. They'll be playing the Red Stones. Japan will be playing the Yellow Stones. China with last rock advantage here in the first. So getting us underway in this battle of the unbeatens will be Japan. And here is Japanese lead, Kosuke Morozumi. Well, looking for the guard here early on, so uh, we can expect to get some stones in play already in the first end. That's a nice tight Center guard there by Morozumi. And this makes me smile. The Chinese are going for it right away. Here is Chinese lead Zhang Jilang. He skipped, skipped the Chinese team last year, but now playing at the lead position. Yeah, back to where he, uh, where he was when uh, Roy Lu skipped at the Olympics and the years uh, leading up to it. Do you think that time playing the skip position now that he's playing back in the lead position is going to help his game? Gives him a different perspective, perhaps? Yeah, I don't think it's going to hurt. Uh, I know all these Chinese players have more or less uh, done a lot of rotation up through the years. I think, uh, I think he's actually skipped um, in, pri <laughs> in prior years. But uh, you know, I've definitely played the, all the positions myself, and uh, I think it's always a good thing to be able to... Uh, to see how it is to play. Morizumi follows that one down, chips it out and rolls to the wing. So Japan is lying one. Zhang Jilang now trying to remove that Japanese stone. Joe. 
Sweeping it. Morozumi looking for the inside roll, trying to get it nearer away from that center guard, but it's a good roll. It's at least half buried. Yeah, with that roll now, it kind of pressures Japan to come around. There's Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi. See them switching now on the brushing, trying to get the stone to curl a bit more. Yeah, Kosuke Morizumi basically sweeping with the curl, trying to get some scores on the ice to, for the stone to fall. Good coast-to-coast -coast brushing there by the Japanese, and they drag it into the eight-foot for shot. That'll get their heart started. China with the hammer here in the first. Teams are playing 10 ends at this competition. Each team has 38 minutes thinking time. Here is the Chinese second stone, Zhou Chang. And Sander, we saw the time clock come into play for the other Chinese team yesterday in the women's event, Bin Yuang actually ran out of time and lost the game as a consequence. So time clocks are a factor in this sport. There's the hit, rolls away and out of the rings. Yeah, I'm just going to leave Japan with uh, the same draw, really. So Japan started the end with that center guard, and now they get a chance to use it. So either took a little too much ice or was a little wide on the throw here. Uh, Tamaguchi. Trying to tighten up the line a wee bit to uh, get the curl in around the guard. So far, just hanging out there, though. This one's really tracking. Well by the guard. It's a little heavier, too. It tends to happen if you throw a few rocks down the same path. It uh, tends to keen up, especially in the first end. And uh, remember, they went coast to coast on that first drop. Might have uh, just heaten up the, the path. It might be a second quicker. So a good chance now for the Chinese with the hammer here in the first. They're lying one. And here's a chance for Xiao Chang to drill another one around that center guard. And sweepers backed away from it right away. I think they're going for plan B here. Plan B would be a freeze to the backstone. They don't want to set up a double. And it kind of works out. They get a little feather off the redstone, and their stone is now sitting in front of a Japanese rock at the back of the house. There we see on that angle, the red Chinese stone sitting in front of that yellow stone of the Japanese. So good uh, alert skipping there from Lou Ray. So third time lucky for the Japanese. Here's Tetsuro Shimizu, the third, coming down again this outturn path. Sweepers are really pounding this one, Sandra. Shimizu's just seen two draws come up heavy on the same path, so it's uh, Well, I'd say it's a really good adjustment here, using the sweepers rather than uh, just see it sail through uh, to the back of the house. And that is a beauty. He drills it right on the lid. Great sweeping by the Japanese front-end players. And look at that, perfectly buried. So Japan's lying one. Now China's just going to try and open up the shot rock and clear the guard. They may try the run back to pick off the Japanese shot as well. Here's the Japanese, or the Chinese third, rather, Zhu Xiaoming. There's contact just past the shot rock. That was so close to picking off the shot as well. 
Well, the only good part is uh, didn't really rip any of the redstones in the back, so still not quite out of jail yet, Japan. Certainly some danger building, that's right. China is playing the redstones. They've got last rock. You can see Yosuke Marzumi now uh, thinking about killing one of the redstones. In the end, I think they're just going to play perhaps just a little tap on the yellow. Tap it down onto the red one. Shimizu again on the outturn. Working it for the curl again here. Koski Marzumi. Trying to get the nose. Tap this yellow one back onto the red, but won't quite, quite get the line. Mm, just needed that stone to curl a fraction more. So Japan's lying one, but China's second shot. So an interesting choice now for the Chinese. You're definitely going to make a play on the shot rock, but where do you want to hit it, Sander? Well, a bit on the inside, I believe. There are risks of jams all over the place. You might just have to uh, give up the back red here to get the roll in behind the guard. I think they'd be quite happy just to sit the two. This is the first end. China would love to get off to a good start with the deuce. Are they by? No, they feather the front. I don't know if there was some miscommunication there or if they just were thinking the shot was lost and trying to save the shooter. Yeah, I think that was uh, what Skip Blue Ray was uh, thinking in the end there. Probably would have over curled uh, the yellow shot stone, so he's looking to rub off the guard to spin it into the house. Just a little bit soft there from uh, Zhao Mingzhu. We've seen that a few times, um, trying to play the soft shots down the forefoot line early on uh, in the game. It might just be uh, a little bit tracky, a little some fresh pebble, not maybe as keen as the draw path, so uh, just tend to grab and lose his momentum just a wee bit. Still some danger here for the Japanese. China does have the hammer, and there are still two Chinese stones in the rings. Looks to me like Morizumi is going to elect a guard. Cer certainly no lack of uh, entertainment so far, Hans. Oh, this is great. Yeah, we've got lots of rocks in play, lots of intrigue. This is what we expected. These teams know each other well. They've played each other a lot at Pacific Asia Championships and other events. And no surprise that both teams really happy to go for it. Here is Japanese skip Yusuke Morizumi. Still looking for their first uh, Pacific Asia Championship win, having finished runner-up six times. Yep. Very much perennial bridesmaids, but looking to get all the way to the altar this year. So that stone comes to rest just on the edge of the center line, probably over curled a bit. So will China be able to make a pass at the shot rock? There we see it. A great angle. Guard covers probably a half to two thirds of the shot rock, but definitely available here for Lou Ray. Well, the key part here is to try and keep the shooter in the eight foot sit too. Not an easy shot. been interesting almost this entire end has been played on the outturn side of the sheet well, I mean, they mean that means they should have a good idea of uh, of the ice there's the Chinese skip Lu Ray
Yes, woe well, must mean they're close to something. Pushes it back gently towards the back of the rings, and that's really nice touch by Lou Ray, and China lies too. That's pretty much perfect, actually. Rolls the shooter in behind the T-line, sits two. That means if Japan plays a hit and roll off the winger, they'll be in behind the T-line, so there should be a draw for China for, to score the one if they make it. Really good judgment. They had to play that quiet wait to hit enough of the stone in the first place, and but keeping the weight down enough so when it rolled, it stayed for second shot. Really nice shot. Oh, just here, Yosuke Morizumi say, uh, bump up, which I assume is bumper. And uh, we'll just try and play that little hit and roll off the red stone. So with, a, with that control weight, I'll actually have a good chance to roll quite quite frozen to the the other redstone and uh, force China to uh, draw for their single. And possibly even nudge the Chinese stone further back to lie 1-2, so yep. first task is to remove the shot rock, however. Looking for the curl now. Trying for the roll. Sweeping it hard to try and get behind that guard. Pretty good shot there from Yosuke Morizumi. I think they just panic swept that one a little bit early and it tracked a little bit straighter than they thought. Looking for the curl at the end, they would have loved another rock and a half of roll. But nice result there for Team Japan. There we see their stone will be at least half buried, so probably a draw for one here to, for China. And if that's the case, pretty good result for the Japanese. There we get a great angle. There's probably a chance for him to sneak on the inside and push it back and maybe score two. Well, they're not taking much ice here. We saw a fantastic touch on the first stone by Lou Ray. Maybe trying to play that same kind of weight. Get across the face of the Japanese stone and maybe score two. So here we are, last rock and end number one. Not too much risk playing this. To just make, gotta make sure you get past the guard, really. Show and Jang on the brushes, really working it. They're by the guard. Now it's a question of the weight. Have they got enough to push it back to try and score more than one? No, they don't. They make contact, so good shot there from China, but not a bad result for the Japanese either. A very entertaining end. China scores one. So after a really entertaining first end of curling, China won, Japan with the hammer, coming into the second end. Zhang gets us underway in the second end. China leading it one to zero. To zero. China's playing the red stones. Japan's playing the yellow stones. And a conservative play here from the Chinese, drawing it into the button area instead of a center guard. Well, I think uh, they're expecting Japan to throw the corner guard, so uh, it's always just a tiny bit easier to put the, the first one on the forefoot and then throw the guard after than the, the other way around. And also by uh, through the center, though, you can try and suck Japan into the center line play, but. Uh, 
Morizumi indeed electing to throw the corner guard. No, game on. Well, Morizumi likes to stay aggressive. They're not going to wait around too, uh, too long. Sang Jilang. Known in the curling world as Harry Potter. You can certainly see the intensity, even with the lead rocks. I like that. They're, um, they're really working hard on every shot, really pressuring the execution. Just comes to bite, so. They did want a guard there, but it's not in the free guard zone, which means the Japanese can throw a hit if they like. Well, there's, well, that's the thing that I've heard from uh, many, many players that's played lead. That it just, it's hard to focus when there's nothing in play and you're playing the same sort of uh, easy task. And you might even say a little boring, just playing the guard all the time. So it's kind of important to stay all in intense and just really focus and try and make sure you put those stones as uh, accurately as possible. And they all play better, I think. No, I think that's a very sound observation. Morizumi with the quiet hit rolls behind that corner guard. So repositioning of stones here as opposed to big weight hits from the Japanese. So both teams really going for it, as you'd expect. We mentioned they're both unbeaten. We've got nine teams in this Pacific Asia Curling Championship event, and only four of them will advance to the playoff phase so i think both of these teams know that a win today would come very near to securing a playoff place for them so absolutely right sander the intensity will be very high today china rips the corner guard so morizumi changing gears now looking to Split the house. Wait, good. Eight, two. Oh. 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 Two. Three. Yeah. So Yoshi Yamaguchi yeah. on his out turn. Yeah. There's the hit, trying to get some separation between those yellow stones. Japan lies too. It almost seems a tad early, actually. Could have thrown the corner maybe once or twice to um, kind of delay that move. It's definitely a gear shift, trying for some old. Ken Watson curling, might just split the house to score two. Might just be worried because there's uh, one red stone on the, the wing there, so if they're playing the hit early on, there's a, there's a better chance they might keep the bank alive. Zhou Chiang. Playing the hit. Looking for some kind of an inside roll. Gets it. Rolls into the back of the eight foot. Morizumi is allowed to sweep that stone once it's past the hog line. So one in the four foot for the Japanese, two in the 12 foot for the Chinese. They're both behind the tee. So Morizumi says, okay, let's sit one in front of that Chinese stone. In turn, draw attempt here for Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi. This Japanese team from Kurizawa. It's a beautiful town. It's about 90 minute trip on the Shinkansen from Tokyo, and that is frozen perfectly to that back stone. So something cooking here for the Japanese, Sander. Yeah, looks pretty good. It's uh, still a chance to play a slash double here. But uh, electing to just play a little hit and roll for now. Chinese skip, Lu Rei, directing his third player, Xu Xiaoming. I notice they have uh, some pretty interesting uh, trousers for the occasion. 
They do. Well, Sander coming from Norway, you'd know a thing or two about interesting trousers on the curling rink, and look at that. What a result. Downweight thin double, and bingo, the Japanese stones pop out of the rings. Yeah, nice little grin from Xiaoming there. I don't think that was the plan. Might not have been the plan, but look at the result. Hits the Japanese stone and just picks it away and saves his own in the back. Wow. Great result for China. So now I suspect the Japanese will be reverting to playing for some kind of a blank. Yes, but back to the subject of the Chinese trousers. They are interesting, making a bit of a fashion statement here. I did notice that uh, Skip Roy Lu is not wearing them. Maybe he didn't get the memo. <laughs> Maybe he just didn't want to use them. <laughs> I assume he uh, you know, showed up in the dressing room for the game, thinking, oh, you guys were serious? <laughs> <laughs> thought you were joking. Well, no joke on that last from, from Zhu Xiaoming making the double and quite content with his attire. Oh. And oh my goodness, after the double takeout, he gasses one and removes his own. Talk about a 180. That wasn't even very close, Hans. Yeah, I think it was massive surprise. Lou Ray kind of wondering what happened there. And so a gift for the Japanese, a chance to split the house and out of nowhere, a chance for a deuce. Well, well, well. Yeah, really a chance for a maximum separation here. With only the skip rocks left. Ray Lou's going to have to... Uh, Make a good couple of shots to get out of trouble here. And this one is sliding too. Will it stay in the rings? Deep, 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 and just clinging onto the rings. Bit of relief there from Shimizu. Well, there might just be a double there. At least a chance to roll quite close to the other one. Definitely looking for the T line there, and they slide all the way to the back 12 foot. So it's a long cross house double, but the angle is definitely there. And one thing about Lou Ray, pretty sure he can throw it hard enough to make this shot. So, can the Chinese skip? Make an improbably long cross house double takeout. There's one, but it's too thin and he spills out of the house. So a bit of a let off here for the Japanese and a bit of a choice now too. Do you have to draw your second one behind the T-line as well now, Sander? Well, the perfect shot would be to basically uh, Mirror the yellow one in the back there. It would be pretty brave of the Chinese to try and follow that and freeze. It would bring the risk of a three into play. So after uh, Morizumi lets go here, it's really up to the sweepers if they want to, if they're able to bring it all the way down to the back 12 or uh, if they need to let it stop about top eight to make the angle as tough as possible for uh, Japan with the hammer here on end number two. China's leading at 1-0, but Japan with last rock and a chance to score two. Sweeper's backing off it now, so they think it's got enough weight. This one has got lots of Sieg, it's gliding deep. Will it stay in the rings? They've overcooked it. It's gone through the rings. Wow, mistake after mistake in this end, unbelievable. Dejection from Morizumi, he knows that was a gift given away. Yeah, well, that certainly wasn't a tolerance for the shot, Hans. Uh, it'd be much better up uh, coming up short, leaving it top 12. Just be in the house anywhere, really. Looked like it really fooled the sweepers because they jumped it early, carried it quite a ways, and then backed away. So, 
Well, maybe they just hit a track where it was just gliding, but it certainly fooled them, and definitely not what the result they were looking for. Well, we did see a few draws coming from the inside and out uh, yesterday that came out quite short, so they were maybe just expecting the, the path to be a little uh, slower. Lou Ray now looking to remove the Japanese shot and try to stick to make him force. It rolls out of the ring, so a bit of a comedy of errors here in the second end. Yeah, definitely not the best end of curling, but um, there's only, only one way from here. Well, we saw a cracker of a first end with lots of rocks in play and some really great shooting, and I'm sure we're going to see tons more great shooting through the course of this game, but teams were giving each other chances here in the second end and the net result is Yasuki Morizumi will simply throw this through the house on the last stone of the second end to blank the end and preserve last rock into end number three. So dejection there from the body language of the Japanese. They know they gave away a chance to score a deuce but they do keep last rock so after two ends of play it's China one Japan, no score. So away we go in end number three. Zhang Jilang, Chinese lead. I mentioned how I thought I remember him skipping the Chinese team some years ago, and uh, after some fact checking, uh, he did in fact skip this team for one game at the World Championships in 2010. That was the last draw, and of course, they played Norway, that's why it was so. Uh, <laughs> Burned in your memory? Exactly. Well, he also skipped this team at the 2014 Pacific Asia Championships to a gold medal. So he's enjoyed some success at the skip position. Here's Yusuke or Kosuke Morizumi. Yeah, he's outstanding in the, that, that year, 2014. It was the first year skipping after uh, Lou Ray took a break. He was just on fire, really. Yeah, he made everything that week. And you can see if his, uh, he's sort of brought that fire into his lead role uh, now as well. Yes, definite intensity. Look at that stare. I mean, that yeah. is... Uh, he's almost <laughs> willing that rock to the front of the house. <laughs> So Japan's got the hammer here in the third. So there's the center line guard. Partly covers the shot rock, but not completely. I think I heard Yusuke say Q, which I think in Japanese means nine. So that in the weight control system probably means about back eight foot weight, back 12 foot weight. I believe you are correct, sir. Okay. Got to get it by the guard first though. Just by the guard. Certainly not back eight foot weight, more like T line, just nudges it. First end of play, we saw all the play on the outturn side of the sheet. That was an in-turn, so. That one really finished hard. Zhao Chang. 
Chinese second player. This one seems to be tracking. Sweepers aren't laying a brush to it. Has to curl. Now it's making a move. Pushes his own stone deep into the forefoot, and China lies one. It looks to me like the Japanese have got second shot in the top of the forefoot. See a foot tap there from Morozumi, looking for hack weight this time. Here is Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi playing the intern. Kasuki Morizumi sweeping to try and hold the line. They're worried about crashing on the guard. It's really cutting and he's all over it. Their own stone spinning to the edge of the rings and just staying on. But that intern does seem to really be moving. Probably a bit downweight. Well, it's not too terrible. Let's open up the front. Two corner guards now, kind of a uh, stagger, and uh, has actually left the shooter in the rings. Something for China to worry about, so. Could be worse. Japan with last rock. Nose hit, but loses his own in the back. China lying 1 2, but might be pretty easy pickings here for the Japanese. Yeah, with those angles, I'd say that's a uh, fair chance for Japan to play a uh, double and get the roll in behind those corners and sit too. As Morizumi lines it up, we'll see if Yamaguchi can execute. But good. They're close. But too thick of the contact. So again, slightly oversweeping it. But those Japanese stones are accumulating on the edge of the house. They're about as far separated as it's possible to be and still be counting. China lies one, but Japan dangerously lying second and third. I really don't want to leave your opposition with uh, Stones in around the fringe of the 12 foot when you don't have the hammer. It's a dangerous game to play, that's for sure. Xu Xiaoming looking to reduce the danger level a little bit. Zhang running out of real estate on the brushing. That one is swept coast to coast and gets a bit of sideways separation as a result. So now China's lying too. Good brushing all around. And she was asking his teammates, well, how was the weight? I think that surprised him how much it curled. Chinese stones behind the T-line. For Tetsuro Shimizu. Little inside roll, pops it sideways. <laughs> well, they kind of started to sweep it and then didn't sweep it. And I think it certainly would have gone far enough to make sure they were second shot anyways. It looks to me like... Hit the one on the wing, try and uh, get these stones a little closer together. Well, now the angle's better for the Japanese to try a hit and roll and make sure that stone is in second shot position. <coughs> Players really haven't taken a close look at it yet. Quite difficult to tell from this overhead who's second shot. is worried about the shot rock first. Get 
Yamaguchi's working it hard. Trying for that inside roll, and he pops it sideways. So now we know for sure that Japan's lying too. Nice shot indeed. That's a universal language in curling. And there we see a great angle. Perfect hit and roll. Japan's lying too. So danger time here for the Chinese. Opportunity here to draw on top of the Japanese stone, but any little mistake here, Sander, and you open the door for three. There we see the Japanese stone in the back of the 12 foot. Lou Ray is going to try to draw right on top of it. Well, you heard Sanja Liang kind of uh, discussing with uh, his skipper there. He might be thinking as a skip still after having skipped the team for a couple of years. So it might sure that's true. Might, might be hard to, you know, hard to let go. Yeah. <laughs> Can't afford to crash the guards. Well by the guards, so how's the weight? Starting to really finish now. Great looking shot. Zhao's trying to finish it. They don't want to bump. Beauty. Great shot there from Lou Ray. Here we see the sweepers. They're looking to weld it right on top of the stone. A tiny little bounce, but they won't mind about that. The angles are really good. So now it's going to be a bit of follow the leader for the Japanese. Now Lou Ray has excellent draw weight. I think he proved that at the, the Olympics, just with a pre-shot draw. Uh, I think he ended up with a zero. Yes. Hit the button at least eight times. I think, he, I think they cross off one. That's uh, mighty impressive. So he had uh, ended up with zero, just having uh, to cross off one where he wasn't on the pin. But uh, everyone's just very impressed. Obviously, not only the you know, not only Lou Ray and his draw weight, but the sweepers and their you know excellent judgment. Exactly. Shimizu and Yamaguchi now trying to bring the stone towards the house for their skip, but they're. Backing away now. This looks looks like it's crashing the guard, and it has. So Yusuke Morizumi is really struggling with his draw weight early in the game. We saw in the previous end, chance to just hit the house to set up a two. He threw it through. This time he's probably a bit narrow and light, and he crashes the guard. Really fighting it. So now it's decision time for the Chinese. Pretty much guaranteed the force if you just get another one in there somewhere, but perhaps they're thinking, is there a way that we can apply even more pressure? They've seen Morizumi struggling with draw weight, so maybe they're thinking, oh well, just hit the one on the wing, lie one, two, and just make him make a draw or a hit near this side of the house. What do you think the good options here are, Sander? Well, just I think just split the house really. Don't want to uh, don't want to leave a double and be too cheeky and. Uh, Morizumi can certainly throw the heat to make a double take up. Yeah, I think you'd rather force him to draw now after miss missing his first one, maybe being a little insecure. Yeah, but I his draw weight. I'd agree. So I just put it anywhere where there's no double. So you want to get a good chunk of the eight foot too. Try and uh, narrow down the scoring area just a little bit for the draw. So coming down to the business end of end number three, Japan's got the hammer, but Lou Ray trying to turn the screws a little bit here on the Japanese. Nice, nice weight control there by Lou Ray and now Japan is going to have to draw the eight foot to save the end and score a point. And what do we think is going to be going through Yusuke's mind as he's climbing into the hack? Well, I'm sure he's been through this many times before. I'm just going to have to rely on the information from his sweepers and uh, try and throw the right split time. 
Um, not sure if they, how much they use their stopwatches, but uh, we'll have some form of communication when it comes to weight. E.g., uh, just tell them, uh, you know, it's about the same as uh, it was last game yesterday. So here is Japanese skip Yusuke Morozumi. Last stone of end number three, drawing against two Chinese stones to save the end. A little bit on and off here from the Japanese sweepers is usually a good sign. Shimizu and Yamaguchi are pounding it. And it's certainly not heavy. Comfortably into the four-foot circle, so that'll be a confidence builder for the Japanese. But a moral victory for the Chinese, it's a force. But Japan is now on the board. After three ends of play, we're all tied up at one. So Kosuke Morozumi leads us off here on the fourth end of this 10 end contest. From the Pacific Asia Curling Championships 2016 in Uisong, Korea. These teams are trying to qualify for the World Men's Curling Championships. They'll be held in April in Edmonton in Canada. But just as importantly, trying to earn their country qualification points for the 2018 Winter Olympics, which will be held in Korea in Pyeongchang. Of course, everyone wants to get to the World Championships, but uh, there's definitely one person that doesn't mind returning to home. Chinese skip, or pardon, uh, Chinese coach Marcel Rock is uh, from Edmonton and uh, obviously represented Alberta a number of years in the Furby Four under uh, Skip Randy Furby. Yes, had the uh, great pleasure of competing against the Furby Four in. Uh, 2001 in Lausanne, great bunch of guys and quite legendary curlers, multiple world championships. Well, this is interesting. Using a stone in the top four foot as a guard. I think that was a bit of a plan B there, coming around it. China with last rock here on the fourth. We mentioned the World Championships. There's nine teams competing here in the men's competition at the Pacific Asia Championships. Two countries will qualify from this region for the World Men's. This competition will be a full round robin. I mentioned coming into this match, the Japanese were on 3-0 and and the Chinese on 2-0. and Four teams will qualify for the playoff phase of the Pacific Asia Championships. And then the semifinals are Olympic style qualifications. The first ranked team will play against the fourth ranked team in one semi and the second versus the third. The winners of that semifinal will go to the gold medal match and they will also qualify for Worlds. So you make it to the final both teams are in the worlds, and it's just about the bragging rights and the gold. Absolutely. So 
Having been there myself in the past, it's nice to know you're going into the gold medal match with a trip to the world's in your pocket, but you still want to win. You know, it's uh, nobody's wanting to not win this championship. And Yosuke Morozumi, as Sanders said earlier in the match, has been a six-time runner-up at Pacific Asia Championships. So I'm really sure he'd like to come away from here with a gold medal instead of that massive collection of silver that he has. I think uh, I think most players in the region here would uh, think it would be nice to see him actually pick up a, a win soon. Trying so hard, been such a good team for so many years. It's hard to not uh, feel a little bit uh, of sympathy, sympathy for the results. Well, they've certainly been knocking on the door and they did qualify for the World Men's Championships last year in, in Basel, and they were the runner-up out of this region, but they had a fantastic Worlds. They qualified for the medal round and were very unlucky not to come away with a medal of their own, finishing fourth. So this Japanese team is a team of quality, but Lou Ray's Chinese foursome, likewise, massive, massive international experience and success. Staying really aggressive here, Japan. Looking for a freeze, three red stones on the house. It's definitely a chance to just uh, try and spill a couple of them. And uh, oh dear, with that heavy draw, just bouncing off the red, uh, say Japan, and a bit of trouble here. It's a bit of an embarrassment of riches here for Lou Ray. And Yosuke's going, come on, guys, I need a shot. There we see one, two, three Jap or Chinese stones behind that Japanese guard and the So Xiao Chang with a chance to massively increase the heat on the Japanese. be a big one right here, even though they're drawing to life four. When you're China and you have the last stone, you're generally not too happy with having to play around the center guards, but uh, when you're sitting pretty. Lock uh, it in. Yep, pretty happy. But it just means that Japan will always have a chance to maybe wiggle one stone in there and uh, make it hard for them. But at the moment, there's not really any way to get to the forefoot. No, it looks like Yusuke Morizumi is going to pop the shoot and bail out big time. He's going to be asking Sir Shimizu to try and make a search and destroy mission on those guard stones. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four stones moving. Well, leaves a bunch of guards up there. Uh, yeah. The only good thing is he's pu pushed every stone in behind the T line. So he's definitely rearranged the order, but there we see the stones flying, the Japanese stones rocketing into the forefoot, but leaving the Chinese lying at least two guarded. So there we see an inviting path on the intern side for the Chinese if they can sit one top button here. Japan will be in a world of hurt. Well, Chaming Zhu's struggle a bit in the game so far. This is. A <laughs> really key shot. They were deep with this one. He's going to allow Japan to come after and basically just kill the whole end. So this really needs to be in the right spot. Tolerance, of course, to leave this one short. Zhang and Zhao sweeping it, but they crash the guard. Another huge opportunity gone for the Chinese. That is a big, big miss by Zhao Mingzhu. Puts that anywhere in the top eight, top 12 foot. Japan's still in huge trouble, but I think now a really good chance for them to get out of uh, jail. We've seen that intern really moving a few times, and I think it's fooling them. There are lots of stones over curling, and a crucial shot here for Shimizu. Still facing two Chinese stones. Needs to navigate the port. Well, this is definitely the best chance they're going to get to. Uh, to get out of trouble in this end. 
one good shot here and uh, everything's more or less fixed. Really bending in here. And that intern really does finish. Trying to get shot rock and not quite second shot, but a very good stone there from Shimizu. That intern side really finishes hard. So a small sigh of relief for the Japanese, but they're not out of the woods yet. Yeah. There's an oh. angle run in here for the Chinese potentially, and here's Zhu Xiaoming trying to atone for that crashed come around attempt. He's gonna try it again on the intern side. Just flick this one out there to uh, perhaps overcompensating for the first one. Yeah, I think so. It's going to crash on the corner. Uh, Jiaming Zhu is not having a good day at the office. Jeez, we've seen him make a double takeout, miss an open hit, and now crashing twice on attempted come around. So you're right, Sander. Tough day so far for Zhu Jiaming. At the moment, it looks like it's uh, Jiaming. It's taken a couple of years off, but uh, he has. Uh, He's been on the team for the last two seasons, playing third. So here we see a veritable forest of rocks in, the round, in and around the house. Ray and Chu having a chat. There we see one, two, three, four, five guard stones in front of the house. And quite a collection of stones in the house. China's lying one, they've got the hammer. But a good chance here for Yasuki Morizumi, who's also been struggling with draws, to get Japan out of trouble and lock one in there in the button area. Well, they draw the one foot for one in the previous end, so should have a good guess with this one. Super's on early, though. Uh, he's calling this uh, guard, I think. Well, again, intern really curling and fooling the players and not even close. Just not enough weight there. Wow. So lots of rocks in play. Five stones in the house and six stones in front of it. So the chance now for the Chinese to have their crack at the intern. We've seen them two crashing on the center and one crashing on an outside guard. So even though that's a big port, seems to be not quite large enough for the players so far this end. Now Lou Ray is going to have a chance. Trying to draw into the button area to lie two. One's tracking a bit wider. We've seen the interns really curl, but they have to wait for this one. It's by the outside guard now. Now it should finish really hard as it comes towards the button area. The sweepers are working it, but have they left it too late? I think they've just got it there for second shot. Not convinced. Well, we have to have another look at that one. They had to wait for it because it was tracking out a little bit. And there we get a fantastic look at it. Nice work, team. I'd say China is definitely lying too. I'm convinced. <laughs> the prosecution rests. Great shot there by Lu Ray and fantastic sweeper. It's really dragging that stone all the way in. That crucial last couple of millimeters totally changes the tone of the end. There we see China with the red stones, Japan with the yellow stones, quite a collection of Chinese red rocks just outside the forefoot, so whatever Yosuke Morizumi does, he doesn't want to do something that could leave Lu Rei a pinball shot to maybe score four or five, so. Do you just swallow your pride and shake 
his hand and say, okay, have your two, or do you try to make some kind of a play at this center? Well, it looks like they will try and go after the shot just played by uh, Dure. Try, try to get to nose. Can he get to nose, though? Well, it does finish hard here. What kind of weight do you think he's going to pull? We well, just heard him say hack. So. Saying hack and not taking a lot of ice. Uh, I, I think I prefer just to play a back ring weight here. Yeah. Oh, did I hear him say just a bumper? So. Well, let's see if it's uh, if they're able to finish. Maybe it's thinking about making uh, the slash. Wait, good. I tried and slashed him to uh, sit Shotstone with uh, the ones in the that's in the forfeit already. Playing bumper weight, trying to hit the Chinese stone and try to remove one, maybe two. Trying to get it to curl now. There's one, there's two. Pushes it aside and reduces China to one. Well, not sure exactly what they accomplished with that. So it's still a draw for two, a tough draw for two for China. Well, if it would have curled just a tad more, that shot stone would have spilled out the forefoot and uh, left them lying shot. So. That was a pine, just didn't curl enough. Yeah, that stone was quite well buried. They tried to play bumper weight. So it was always going to be a big ask to have the stone to curl enough to make a gentle little double. So China does lie one, so it's, I won't call this a free draw for two because it's a very tough draw. He's gonna need a piece of the button to score two. And there we see Morizumi. You can only watch. It's almost like you're happy to give them two here, thinking that... <laughs> Could have been much worse. Well, I was thinking if he made that shot and got it to spell out, maybe China was, uh, would be thinking to play some sort of run back. It could be for a bunch of points. Yeah, definite danger. So, Chance here for China to break on top. It's the last stone of the fourth end for Lu Ray. Trying to draw the button. He's played a couple of good draws so far. Sang and Zhao backing away from it. Line's getting better now. Now it's just the weights in the hands of the sweepers. Need a piece of the button. And there it is. How do you like that? Right to the lid and a great draw for two points for Lu Ray. Sander was talking about his fantastic control of his draw weight and another great example there. Drills the lid in China. Takes a lead three to one after four ends of play. Well, after a fourth end with just about everything happening in it, we're underway in end number five. With a two-point lead, the Chinese want no part of a guard. Good sweeping. Zhang thanks his teammates for dragging that stone into the eight foot. That well, was quite a fourth end, Sander. What do you think we're going to see from Morizumi in the fifth? Well, I think they're just going to keep on going. Put, so, put stones in play and try and grab a deuce back. If they chose to play <laughs> that aggressive without the hammer, <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> Can they take it up a gear? Yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> my question. <laughs> when you're yeah. already in overdrive, do you have anywhere else to go? <laughs> Corner guard, long one from Morizumi. You'll see uh, Sanja Liang out the hack wow. right away. You mean, it's a good, you uh, it's a good wow. thing for a front-end player just to be that ready in the hack wow. to go, spending 
basically no time at all on the shot, leaving more time for a skipper to, um, you know, for the tougher calls. Do you think that's something that he brought back from his time holding the brush, wishing that maybe his teammates gave him a little bit more time at the end of the game? That could be it. I know there's many skips up there are frustrated, sitting waiting for the front players to, you know, oh, come on already, just throw it. That's right, it's a guard, just throw the guard. Kasuki Morizumi, recently elected to the World Curling Federation Athletes Commission by his former, or his fellow athletes, it's quite an honor. Gets a bit of separation, keeps the stones in play. It's a characteristic of this Japanese team. They'll be very happy to keep stones in play to try and use them later in the end rather than remove them from play. Saw them playing against Australia last night and we saw the Australians often electing to hit and the Japanese in return would just keep stones in play and accumulate, generate pressure. Xiao Chang. <laughs> Looking for a late sweep to try and get something and maybe not push it, but another miss on a hit. So quite rare that we've seen probably two or three missed open hits in this game, Sander. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. Quite uncharacteristic from this. Very talented Chinese team. Yes. Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi yes. trying to capitalize yes. on the mistake. Yes. Yes. And again, crashing a guard on an attempted come around. Japanese are just fighting it a little bit, I think, Sander. Yeah, I see sure. some dejection in the body language there. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're just slightly off or if it's uh, hard to read the ice or just a bit of both. It's, it's a bit uh, worrying, to be honest. Yeah. Just looking at the body language of the players, they're quite dejected and they're going to need to push the reset button and fire themselves up. They're still in this game. They're only down by two. But they are giving away opportunities. China lies three. It's gonna be important for Yosuke Morozumi to stay patient. Sander talked about their natural aggression, but you don't want to Overdo it when you've got last rock. If you get a deuce here, you go to the fifth end break all even. Shimizu and Yamaguchi gently brushing it, trying to control the roll. Very nice shot. Yellowstone belongs to Japan. So let's see what Xu Xiaoming can do. Had a very rough fourth end. Two crashed come arounds. Sweeping it for distance now. They want to try and bring it back to that Japanese stone. Comes to rest full eight foot. Pretty good angle for the Chinese. That'll help Zhu Xiaoming's confidence a little bit. So, interesting shot choice here for the Japanese. Looks to me like they're just going to try and freeze that Chinese stone center. Quite an aggressive call here. Tetsuro Shimizu on his outturn. 
Do you like this call, Sander? Yeah, don't, mind, don't mind it. I'm just uh, not too big on the result. Terrible angle for the Japanese. So pretty good weight, but we can see from the angles there. <laughs> yellow, red, red. If you can get to the nose of the yellow one, you probably pop both of the Japanese stones and kill everything. But you can't because it's half hidden behind the guard. So Lu Rei is asking Zhu Xiaoming to Open it up. R. R. Good execution there. Clears the front stone. So interesting choice now for Japan. What are the options, do you think? I think they're going to move. <laughs> they need to change the angles, that's for sure. I think they might be looking to play the hit on the red stone on the wide left and then trying to uh, roll the shooter and basically bounce the top yellow over to the other side, get some separation. So Yusuke Morizumi pointing at the back line, so I think it's back line wait for Shimizu. Powerful Japanese brushers trying to hold the line. But it comes to the nose and pushes it straight back. No, Japanese don't seem too disappointed by the result, but starting to create a little bit of danger for themselves now with the Chinese stones potentially being quite well protected. I uh, could have played that with just a tad more weight. Yeah, with just the back line weight, so you would have opted for maybe a board weight. Oh. Yep. And even a control weight. Made sure to kill the one red and then try and... Mm. They were obviously trying to catch it all thinner and uh, bounce the yellow, but I don't think you'd get a lot of separation with that kind of weight. Play at least high for that kind of shot. It keeps all the yellows in the house, though. That's good. Yeah, Japan is definitely trying to build themselves a multiple point end here, trying to think about three or four as opposed to two. Right now those uh, red stones are angled up for a double, so China will need to uh, deal with it. They're looking for a little tap, I think, on the top yellow. Just to try and push those red stones around a little bit, do you think, Sander? Or yeah. what kind of weight do you think they want to play? Uh, just T-line back four, maybe, just to, to change up the angles. Just to, just a hair low here on the inside of the yellow, I think. There's a great shot from the hack end. We can see the angles of those stones from the perspective of Lou Ray. Seen him make some fantastic draws in this game, and here's another delicate little shot. Fantastic brushing by the Chinese front end. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly what they're wa wanting. So now an interesting choice for the Japanese. Just a little repositioning changes the angles and it changes all the perspectives on the shot. Morizumi's never seen a big weight slash double that he didn't like. Could he hit the red and pop across the both of the red ones and spill all three? Seems to be what he's lining up. Running the red into the pocket of those other two reds, and because of the angle that he's coming in at, he's thinking he can make a triple takeout. Yep. That looks possible. So... Lou Ray's trying to repositioning the angles of the stones, but he might have created an opportunity, a very difficult shot, but a makeable one. And it would set the Japanese up for a, a big end if he can make this. 
Just trying to hit that redstone just on the brush side of the rock, about you know, two thirds with big weight and careen them into the other two Chinese stones. So attempted triple takeout here for Japanese skip, Yasuki Morozumi. He certainly rearranges them. Nice stone there from Morozumi. He's pretty happy with the result. Great brushing from the sweepers. And that's about as good as you can do, I would say. See the contact point just past his own, moving all of the Chinese stones. There we see now Japan is lying too. They've got fourth shot in the top of the 12 foot, so a very steep double here for Ray Liu. Do you think that is what he's looking at? Do you think he's looking at a huge weight sideways double? Yeah, and I, it seemed like he just playing that and rolling, but I think they're going to play it on the safe side. Um, they don't need to necessarily kill both the L's, but uh, just kind of roll into it and nudge it a foot to the side to lie two. We gotta make sure they stick around here. They don't want to give Morizumi a really easy shot for a two. And we see Xiao Xiaoming holding the brush for Skip Lu Rei. Japan with the hammer here on the fifth. Got one. What kind of angles he got right on the beak? Well, that kind of weight, I don't <laughs> think the double would have been a problem. No, that's true. He certainly threw a missile there. Now, do you think Morizumi might be getting greedy and thinking thin double for three? Or is he just going to be content to try and play a gentle weight hit? And he's going to have to roll to get a piece of the eight foot to get his two. Well, there's a slight chance you play the slash. You you kick out your own as well. Yep. But the hit and roll for two isn't very easy either, actually. No, it's not. He's going to have to roll at least half a rock onto the eight foot to get a second point. We see Shimizu looking at the angle on the double. Well, so in retrospect, that wasn't actually a bad result for China. Yep, it looks quite routine. That stone's wide open, but if you hit it on the nose, you only score one. And Morizumi is definitely not interested in scoring one. He's saying, okay, well, what if I hit it on the inside? Do I pop off our own, and do we push forward that way and get two that way? Abunai, I know what that word means in Japanese. That means dangerous. <laughs> yeah, well, I think what I was thinking is, uh, okay, I could play this with a hack and try and roll it in, but I'm afraid to jam it. But you don't really have to. You just play this controlled. You only have to roll about a foot or so, and uh, that's enough to get a bite of the eight foot. Stone no. tends to roll a bit lower than you think. Yeah, well, my New Zealand teammate has a wonderful phrase, Dan Mustapick. He says, the toughest shot in curling is a hit and roll when you need it. And this would be a situation where Morizumi is definitely going to need to roll somewhere to score a second point. So I'm not sure what the call is in the end here. If she's no, either playing the hit and roll off of the zone yellow top 12, I think that's the call. Well, it's lots of weight. Well, is he trying to navigate through and get to the backstone as well? Trying for the push off his own, and he does push forward, so it is a score of two for Japan. Kept the weight up so he would have enough momentum when he careened off his own stone to push forward into the eight foot. So after quite an intriguing end of curling, and an intriguing five ends of play halfway through this game. Japan comes back with a deuce of their own, and after five ends of play, we're all tied up, folks. China three, Japan three.
Well, in a really exciting game, and in the fourth end, Chinese skip Lou Ray with one stone just behind the button, having to draw the button for a second point and absolutely drills it. Two points for China, giving them a three to one lead after the fourth end. And then in the fifth end, more drama. Japanese skip Yusuke Morizumi having to play a bit of a carom shot. Hits the Chinese stone, nudges his own stone and creeps forward into the eight foot for a score of two leveling the match after five ends of play, China three, Japan three. So a fantastic first half of the match. We knew at the beginning of the game this was gonna be a beauty. Both of these teams unbeaten. Both of these teams with world championships experience. Here we see Japanese lead Kosuke Morizumi, affectionately known as Kenny, commented on his hair last night in the match against Australia. And looks like he still brought his A game hair wise into this match this afternoon, Sander. Yeah, he's made some good shots too. Except for that uh, corner guard in the previous end, uh, ended up a bit long, he's been uh, pretty on point. Very popular player worldwide in curling. We mentioned he's a newly elected member of the Athletes Commission. He's also a winner of the Coley Campbell Award at the World Championships, which is awarded to the most uh, sportsmanlike player elected by the fellow competitors at Worlds. So lots of friends in the world of curling for Kosuke Morizumi. There's one right on the button for Zhang Xilang, Chinese lead, bit of a smile, said, yeah, had it all the way. So this is setting up like a heavyweight prize fight. There we see Kasuki Marizumi with his second stone of the end. Teams trading ones and then trading twos, trading punches. Who's going to be left standing at the end of the 10th end? Sweeper's backing right off this one, and it is tracking and going deep and maybe right through the rings. Where did that come from? Hmm. Well, you see it happen sometimes at the fifth end break where the ice techs just run the sheepskin up and down the ice to clean away debris, and you come back on in the sixth end, and all of a sudden it's sliding another five feet and you weren't expecting it, but boy, that was much more than a five foot error. Well, he just threw a guard that was coming up a little light, so yeah. I'm not sure if that was the explanation, Hans. Well, Chinese looking to capitalize, throwing another one around that guard. So the end is shaping up well here for the Chinese. Yeah, a lot better of an uh, Adjustment from the Chinese lead. And there we see Stone's perfectly behind that guard. So now Tsuyoshi Yamaguchi is going to have to deal with that. Be quite demoralizing for a team you get behind in the match and you scrap your way to a deuce to get it all level, level on the scoreboard and then you make a bit of an error on a routine shot and all of a sudden you're in the stup early in the piece. Good corner freeze there from the Japanese but the Chinese are still lying too. So something brewing here for the Chinese. Xiao Shang. Chinese second player. This Chinese team from the Harbin area of China. Where they have a world renowned winter festival with ice sculpture. Wow. Couldn't sculpt his way past the corner guard or the center guard, crashing it. 
But leaving his own stone, blocking the path into the forefoot. It's more of a rock chiseling. <laughs> Morizumi now is going to be looking for some kind of a jackhammer here, but you know, a bit of a delicate shot first from Yamaguchi. Japanese team playing with fire here. China's got the hammer. I don't think I've seen this from Team Japan in, uh, on previous occasions. They tend to be a little too aggressive without the hammer. And this, uh, they've been caught out a few times. Just gotta make sure they don't uh, yeah, get themselves in too much trouble. That stone, not bad, but it comes a little short, a little light, and it's available for the Chinese, so. Talked about the Japanese aggression, sometimes getting them into trouble, and the door is open here for the Chinese. Attempted freeze comes a little bit short and a little bit wide. Can Zhao capitalize? Oh, pretty nice stone there from Xiao. <laughs> they had to really wait for that one. They were willing it to curl, and it did. It got across the face, so... Now it's time for the Japanese to start blasting. No more cute stuff. And this is one blaster par extraordinaire. Tetsuro Shimizu. Loves the big weight hits. So, in the immortal words of Meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. Two Chinese stones go rocketing out of the rings. One, two, moves the third one. It sticks around. Yeah, it's got a hair too high. Nearly the triple takeout. Bit of damage control there for the Japanese. Yep, things looking a lot better. China still has to uh, play around the center guard. Here's Chu Xiaoming. He's had an uncharacteristically poor game. We've seen him crashing guards and missing open hits. So, What do you think Marcel might have said to him at the fifth end break? Oh, it's, I think that's too hard to call, Hans. <laughs> <laughs> Chance to reset here, and that's a pretty nice result. Half buried behind the guard in front of the T line. Pretty good result. There we see it. So now it's a bit of a teaser for Morizumi. There's a corner of it visible from the hack, and yeah, I heard bumper down, so... They want to play some kind of a bump a hit shot at this, but a little bit heavy, a blow by everything. A little bit light, you crash the guard. Sixth end of the game, China's got last rock. We're at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships in Uisung, Korea. These teams trying to qualify for the World Men's Curling Championships in Edmonton. Now it looks to me like Morizumi is saying, okay, let's just rip that guard or at least run it back, the center guard. He's playing for the double run takeout. Yep, pocket. Plan B. Guess the double's on the guards, not too bad. Certainly lowers the danger level a little bit, but China's still got something going here. They're lying too. Okay. Here we see one, two guard stones rocketing out of the house. Shimizu. So Zhu Xiaoming. Heard hard whoa, so there must be really close. They want it to curl. <laughs> Trying to 
Somehow will that stone to curl. Shimizu trying to sweep that stone out of the rings. Does it spin back? No, it doesn't. So another opportunity lost, and <coughs> Xu Xiaoming's day of difficulty continues. He really needed that stone to stick around. So now a relatively easy double takeout, if there can be such an easy thing as an easy double takeout for Yusuke Morozumi. Just has to hit that stone fractionally on the brush side. And he will kill both of the Chinese shots. There we see a great angle of it from overhead. Looking for contact just on the brush side of the top stone. But does he lose his shooter as well? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> That's pretty close to a little frozen roll there. <laughs> Would have been cheeky. Yeah, Morizumi was really hoping to keep his shooter probably in front of the tee line over in that area, but it's just rolled a bit too far and off the rings. So an opportunity here maybe for the Chinese to freeze that themselves. Yeah, just make it a little bit harder for Morizumi to uh, make the peel. Well, and we've seen Lou Ray make some absolutely outstanding draws and freezes in this game. Can he make another one here? It's got enough weight now. They want it to curl in front of that stone. It's nowhere near it. The weight's great, but no freeze there. Uh, all too much ice, I think. Could be. You see that very often on these kind of shots where uh, you, you're more or less trying to place the stone almost outside the rings, just uh, yeah. a little bit on the safe side. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is to try and draw to the wing and then just to overcurl the sheet and miss the sheet entirely. So you're right, probably a bit conservative with the ice. Nice chance here for Morozumi, though. If he can hit and flop in front of that yellow one, he makes the uh, blank attempt much tougher for the Chinese. There is Japanese skip. Yusuke Morozumi. He's playing quiet weight. I think they like it. Well, they're hoping for a little outside roll, but quite content to be there and force China to hit and roll out of the house to blank and keep last rock. Play here on end number six. We're all tied up at three. Lou Ray, I suspect, will look to blank the end. Yusuke Morozumi looking on. So last rock to come here. Heart. Of end number six. Heart. Go, go, go. China Heart. looking to blank. Go, 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 go. Heart, heart, heart. Really working it. Just squeezes out of the house and China does indeed blank the sixth end to retain last rock into end number seven. So here from Wee Sung at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships after six ends of play, we're all tied up. China three, Japan three.
We're heading towards the business end of this match. This could go either way. Yeah, I'd say so. It's uh, been a bit of a roller coaster so far. A couple of the players haven't quite been uh, playing up to scratch and uh, <laughs> had a lot of aggressive ends. So, you know, we'll see. No big score so far. Only twos and ones up on the scoreboard. It could easily change. Well, there's certainly been rocks in play and potential for big ends brewing. Zhang Jilang would have liked that one behind the center guards, but. So China blanking the sixth then. They've got the hammer here on the seventh. Wonder if there's something going on with uh, mm. Kosuke Morizumi's second stone because we saw him throw one into the hack in the last end after throwing a guard and again heavy with his second shot of the seventh end. Wonder if there might be a small variance in his stones. Could, could, could very well be. A bit of a, a runner. Zhang Jilang. Pops his own and pushes it out of the house. Well, well. <laughs> Bit of a wry smile from Zhang, but that certainly wasn't in the program. Pretty untraditional start to the end. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't find that at the front of the playbook, that's for sure. Well by the guard. <laughs> Wanting it to curl and finish a little bit behind that center. Brings it into the forefoot, but maybe a maximum of a corner buried, so still available for New Ray. Japan playing the yellow stones. Zhao Chang. Crashes the front. Well, this outturned side of the away end seems to be baffling both of these teams. It looks like he's getting some feedback from his uh, skipper about his uh, release there. So, I'm not sure if I would blame the ice uh, right away. No. It's been looking pretty good so far. Some honest feedback there. Probably something that no thrower likes to hear that you threw it ugly, but that was probably what happened. Hard work for Kasuki Morizumi. Drags it into the front 12. <laughs> Covers his shot on the outturn side, but still available on the intern. Show looking to atone for that. Crashed guard attempt. Oh. 
Wow. Saved by the sweepers, just squeaking it by that stone in the top 12. Okay. I think I might have seen a spark when it went by. It was really close. Not bad angles here for the Japanese, though, the way those red stones are staggered. Could be an opportunity for the Japanese to double them up and roll behind that center guard. Satsura Shimizu. Job one is to remove the shot. Can he remove a pair? Just by kills his own in the back, so he just needed to be a little bit more on the high side to make the double. But a good result for Shimizu. I guess a good roll instead. And I think in the order of priorities, Morizumi is happier to have his stone take the stone and take the play away to the other side of the sheet. About half the stone visible from the hack end of the ice for Zhao Ming Zhu. Well, it's the kind of shot that uh, you would make for fun. Usually, but, uh, as we said, struggle a wee bit. Not only him, but uh, a couple of the players on the ice today. Looks pretty good. Very nice head and roll to mm -hmm. sit to. Heard Lou Ray say, gotta go. So picking up some uh, English phrasing and curling sweeping calling. Well, they mm. definitely spend a lot of time in Canada. And they certainly do. They compete regularly on the World Curling Tour and compete often internationally. Their coach, of course, Marcel Rock, also a Canadian. So here's the Shinkansen, Setsuro Shimizu. Hammers it on the nose, was looking for an inside roll, but nothing doing there. So good chance here for the Chinese. They've got the hammer in the seventh. They blanked the sixth. But if they could get their deuce here, they would take control of this game. Definitely a roll. How far is it going to go? And it is perfect. Great read there by the entire Chinese team. Good weight communications, good line read. Great result. And of course, the run back is called by Marzumi. Well, we talked earlier that there was never a slash double that Yusuke Marzumi didn't like, and there's certainly not a short straight run back that he doesn't like. Wouldn't surprise me if he's thinking Actually, I'll run this back and make the double. Yeah, he's got both the options. The double are just trying to stick it. There we see two Chinese stones in the ring. Morozumi's going to drive his own straight back onto that stone on the button. And if he's a little bit high side, could potentially make a raised double takeout. Let's see. Here we go. Is it over curling? Yes, it has. He's blown by everything. So he could afford to make a bit of a mistake on the high side, but he sure couldn't make a mistake over curling, and that's what's happened. That's a disaster for the Japanese. So now the door is wide open for the Chinese to certainly score two, and this brings three into the equation. Sometimes you live by the sword, and sometimes you die by the sword. Japanese playing the big weight run back, and that miss could be fatal. 
。这个吧，这个这个是太难了，这这打薄的呀那样的。你差点吧，差点。哎，不，磊哥要不可以这样，磊哥，磊哥可以这样，咱这局反正不是，先虽然说有两分到三分的机会，那可以打这个。拿不准可以叫暂停。We see Zhang Jilang, the former skipper of this team, taking charge and giving the options. The teams do have 38 minutes of thinking time, so Chinese have been playing quickly, so I don't think the time clock's a factor. So we have a former skip, the current skip, and the vice skip discussing everything. Actually, the second. Well, the team has also skipped a Pacific Juniors to a gold. So there's meant to be some discussion. Lots of experience at the tee line for sure for this Chinese team. So after all those options, Sander, if uh, you're Lou Ray about to climb into the hack, what shot choice would you make? I think, you know, it's 3-3 uh, it's three, three right now, right? So four ends to go scoring two is huge. So whatever you want, whatever you do, make sure you don't leave a triple or a uh, chance for Japan to, uh, to get the force. I think they're going to try and uh, move the, the stone and the forfeit around just a little bit because uh, as it lies, it's a pretty uh, automatic double, uh, double and stick in behind that you know, Yellowstone top 12. So I wonder if it's just going to try and tap this back and maybe even just roll the shooter a little bit to, to the wing. Get the two stones level and uh, get the shot stone back to the house. So after a lot of discussion, Chinese trying to reposition these stones. Wanted to hit that a little bit thinner, I think, but they move that stone to the top of the forefoot and they're lying three. Yeah, that's not terrible there. No, so. Bit of a tempter here for the Japanese. <coughs> He's made the double harder, I'd say. Yeah, they're. The double on the two stones in the forefoot now is quite steep, and the double cross house to the stone on the T line is quite flat, so. Now they're actually lining up the triple. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all knowing Yusuke Morozumi <laughs> saying, can I, there's a, an around the horn triple here, so let's play that. Is it there though, Hans? I don't know, uh, I would, I'm with you, I think now. You have to make a double anyway. You do have to get rid of two stones, that's the first task. I'm not but quite sure. But you don't sure. want to get too greedy if you're thinking line-wise to get rid of two and then make it a tough shot for two for the Chinese. I'd be opting for that, but a bit of the riverboat gambler in Yasuki Morozumi, he thinks, okay, it's there and I can kill all three of them. Let's watch. Well, I think the skinny double might be easier than the thick double anyway, so uh, you play that and... Uh, the action your, just might take you there. If your shooter can nestle in them by the guard or maybe even get contact with third, you'll, you'll take it. But I'm just not quite sure if the shooter's gonna spring uh, back up all that far to uh, get contact with the third rock. Well, it's on its way. One, two, but doesn't squirt it out of the house, and so now it's a draw for three. Oh boy. Well, we said live by the sword, die by the sword, and it could be time to die by the sword for the Japanese. They're trying to remove a, all three stones, but hits it really thin, looking for more contact on that second stone, but just catching it thin and leaving it in the back of the eight foot. Well, you know, it might have been close to uh, the triple. Well, it was there, and Yusuke Morozumi certainly thought it was there and was trying to make it, but matter of millimeters gives Lou Ray just has to be full 12 foot to score three and put a hammer lock on this game. And that looks like the decisive moment in this match. Actually, I actually took the bumper off the ice. So here we go. Last stone of the seventh for Lou Ray. Trying to put a hammer lock on this game, trying to draw for three. Two stones in the bank, they need full 12 for the three, and he has got it easily. So it's a huge count of three for the Chinese. 
coolly drawing it into the forefoot. Skip Lou Ray and his Chinese teammates hitting a hammer blow on the Japanese. Three points on the scoreboard and China takes a huge six to three lead after the seventh end. Well, no guards now for Team China, having thrown that <laughs> big three spot on the board in the seventh. And now for the Japanese, we'll lead Kosuke Morizumi. See some quite despondent body language in the Japanese. They know that was a hammer blow. Hard to come back from three down against this excellent Chinese team. Well, I'd say that's not the first time we see a multiple score in a seventh end in a curling game. Very often the game where uh, you go hard for the force and uh, you might end up uh, giving up a, a big end. Yeah, that end really revolved around that run back that Yosuke tried on his first stone, blowing by and giving the Chinese a chance to certainly lock up their two points and then the attempted triple takeout, giving the Chinese a relatively easy draw for three, which they converted. A well, good thing for Japan is they they have two hammers against China's one. If they score two here in the eight, four and nine, get a two back in ten, they're all tied up. So that's definitely the formula for the Japanese. You're absolutely right, Sander. A deuce here absolutely keeps you in this game. sliding deep in the house. They won't mind. They're just trying to make use of that corner guard. And Lou Ray now knows that that's the danger stone. So he's going to ask his second stone, Zhao Chang, to run that corner guard. And he blows it right by and picks out the stone in the back. Wow, bit of good fortune there for the Chinese. Yeah, just sl slid a bit tight there, actually, and just set it back to uh, too much. That's that's why you peel it that way. That's true. We saw that last. Uh, we saw it yesterday, actually, in the uh, women's match between uh, China and uh, Korea, where. There was an option to maybe play a shot where you had two options and that, that they didn't choose, choose that option and they wound up nose hitting. So it's always good to have a plan B available. And plan B came into effect on that shot by Zhao. Like a better draw this time. Yeah, higher in the house and better angle behind that guard. So less of a plan B available for the Chinese this time. Once again, calling them off right away. But he has contact this time, I'd say. <laughs> Very gentle contact. <laughs> Bit of a walk on the tightrope there for Xiao Xiang. But 
Gets the job done. Siyoshi Yamaguchi. Play and end number eight of this 10 end contest. If we're tied up after 10, we will play an extra end. Uh, that card's a bit too close to the house. Yep, so now the Chinese can clear the guard and remove the Japanese stone behind it. Xu Xiaoming. Bit of a classic Andy Cap double knee slide there by Xu. Really big extension there from uh, Xiaoming. Didn't seem to be uh, too much in control. Just kind of flinged it. Yeah, removed the guard, but didn't make the double. So a chance here for Shimizu to replace that corner guard and maybe get a bit more separation. How long do the Japanese wait before they have to make some kind of a play on those stones in the house? Well, I think they got to do that on the next one, uh, Hans. This one also creeping tight, more than tight. It's into the rings. That's just going to kill the end, I think. Yeah, Shimizu knows it. He needed that stone short of the rings. Shimizu is at a decent game. But uh, that is a huge mistake. At a crucial oh. time. Xu Xiaoming. Oh. One, two, and there they go. Well, actually spin the shooter up. And that's the stone that Japan can use. Come around the, the stone, top 12. It's pretty much a guard. Yeah, Jap Japan now, we see the double takeout by Zhu Xiaoming, removing both the Japanese stones and rearranging his own. Well, now is Morizumi going to be making a play on the shot rock and maybe a little hit and roll? Tetsuru Shimizu on his intern. I'm a little surprised they're playing the hit, though, Hans. You think they'll go uh, all out for the two here? Just play a draw. Yeah, they do need to keep this stone in play, but it's right on the nose and wide open and available for the Chinese. So, yes, after a game full of aggression and three down, a bit of a surprising shot choice there from the Japanese. But Lou Ray and his Chinese teammates will be saying, thank you very much. We'll just eliminate it. China doesn't mind at all giving the Japanese one point in this end. Because if they do, they of course get the hammer back in the ninth two up. Looking for a little roll now to get a bit more separation between those stones and make a hit and roll harder for the Japanese. So good execution there from the Chinese. They lie three. Japan with the hammer, but running out of time and running out of options. <laughs> Japan coming into this game on a perfect 3-0 record, but that's very much in jeopardy now. <laughs> Ch 
China came into this game on 2-0. Oh. We saw a game they played yesterday against Australia. Australia's Ian Palangio had a shot to win, a very difficult one, but a makeable one. Barely missed it, and the Chinese stole the victory. But I the draw here. Didn't look like uh, a lot of ice for the draw. This doesn't look light. By the guard, is it going to stay in the house? It's going to go deep regardless. Will it stay in the house at all? No, it slides completely through the ring. So the wheels are falling off the bus completely for the Japanese here. I thought, I thought they were playing the head and roll, actually, with the, the ice they were taking. I don't think that would have been uh, enough ice for them with the right uh, weight. Just barely squeaked past the top stone. So it's kind of an embarrassment of riches here for the Chinese. They're lying three already. Best the Japanese can do now is score one. And now it's like, where do you put the rock that can help us make it even tougher? That's a uh, luxurious problem. Great problem to have. Yeah, but some, some teams tend to, uh, I'd say, underthink how to shot and just put it anywhere in the house. But mm. you really should do your best. You know your uh, opponent will be uh, pretty close to the four for the, with a draw any day. So just going to make it as tough as possible. So after some discussion, Chinese looking to cut down the scoring area even more for the Japanese. Yeah, cutting down real estate, but also just um, cutting off the path, really. Make it uh, harder for Morozumi to access the forefoot. They want to pressure him to play the intern. He's uh, come up short a few times on the intern draws. Zhang Zhao brushing this into the full 12 foot. So maybe a foot or two short of where they'd like to be, but importantly, as Sander pointed out, it does become an impediment to the path on the outturn side. So it does make Yasuki Morizumi choose the intern to draw against four to save the game, effectively. If he was to miss this shot, you would have to say, lights out. And after throwing his first stone completely through the rings, the natural tendency is to dial it back a little bit, so the danger of throwing it light becomes more of a factor. Can Morozumi keep Japan in this game? Final stone here of end number eight. Yusuke Morozumi drawing against four. Brushers like it. How's the line? It's really cutting now. Safely past that stone in the top 12 foot and safely onto the T-line. Great stone there from Morozumi. Japan lives to play another day. Throws it on the T-line for a score of one. But after eight ends of play, China gets the hammer and they're in control leading this one six to four.
So Team Japan fighting for their life in this game. Trailing at six to four. Kusuke Murazumi now will be asked to throw a guard. And really, Sander Olvag, two ends to play. The formula for the Japanese is pretty simple. Steal, steal, steal. Yeah, it's simple in theory, anyway. Tough to do. But if you're going to do it, getting your guards in good places in the free guard zone portion of the end is absolutely essential. So instead of the traditional tick shot, China says, okay, boys, you're going to have to give us a guard. We're just going to go around it. We're going to try and put you away right now. So it's a bit like a poker game out there. Who's going to bluff and who's going to respond? And saying, we need guards. And there's two of them. Still in the free guard zone, part of the end, so China can't clear those guards right now. So Lu Ray showing a little bit of Riverboat Gambler himself, although he's up two. Saying, okay, have those guards. I'm trusting that Zhang Jilang can drill another one in there. Past the top one, coming to rest. Pushes his own stone just behind the tee line. Yeah, I'm still pretty good. Oh yeah, <laughs> very much game on now. So Japan's got the center guards that they want. China's got the great come arounds that they want. So from here on in, it's going to be a game of tactics and positioning. They'd love to have their stone quite tight to that stone on the top of the forefoot. Maybe a foot short of where they would love to be, but something to work with for the Japanese. Now the free guard zone part of the end is over, so Lou Ray is saying, okay, I can hit the Japanese stone. Can I hit two or three of them? Well, so Shang has had uh, a few missed shots in this game. Be a great time to uh, pull out the, the big stuff. Playing a clearing shot, trying to kill one and maybe more. Moves that second stone out to the edge of the sheet. Still a guard, but opens up the forefoot at least. I think Lou Ray would have preferred to get that red stone a little bit further to the side of the sheet. So now Yamaguchi. Looking to add to that slowly building wall of granite. That one's carrying quite a long way. Probably about two feet deeper than they would have liked. China's definitely going to clear one of the guards. Only question is which one. 
Very nearly the same path he threw on his last shot. I think they hit about three quarters of this on the outside and careen it towards the other Japanese guard stones. High side, one, two, double clear. Nice shot there. Good read there from Lou Ray. And now there are no stones on that center line in the guard spot. Just 10, so it's like back 12 foot weight they're looking for here. Just want to come to the nose of their own stone. Push it straight back. Just rearrange these Chinese stones back a little bit. Wait, get. I'm back. Back right. Back right. Back right. Back right. Doesn't want to knock them out of play. Just wants to push them behind the tee line. Not a bad result, Sander. Yeah, not terrible, not perfect. Uh, there's definitely an angle on the top yellows oh, to make a double, oh, but uh, I haven't been able to push the reds a little further back. Chance to set up a little pocket, but uh, just not quite sure if it's going to be enough to steal here. No guards available. And Japan's just going to have to pray for a miss from uh, Zhang Mingzhu. Well, we did see him miss an open hit earlier in the game. What will happen here? <laughs> Pretty much perfect. Absolutely. Fine double take out there from Xu Xiaoming. China with the hammer here on end number nine. Uh, Japan's just going to look to tap this uh, the top redstone back two feet, set up a little pocket for uh, for later, really. So this is a setup shot. He's calling this T line, so this one's really moving. This is over curled. Yeah, just got the curl a bit too early here, and. Uh, it's actually nowhere close. Wow. Wheat was actually pretty good. Japanese having a really tough time generating something here. Maybe just a tad, uh, just not enough ice. Pull a little tight on the broom, and uh, you know, uh, as we come to the later stages. Uh, of the game, it tends to get a little flat around the center line. A little more friction, a little more curl. So a stone tends to maybe grab a bit earlier. But uh, Japan will have another chance. Yeah, a bit of a smile there from Zhu. He was really hoping that uh, he'd probably just roll out of the rings. He didn't really want to stick around in the back 12 foot, but. You'd have to say, all things considered, you'd rather be China right now than Japan. You're lying three and you've got the hammer. And you're up two. Up three. Play here in the penultimate end of this contest, and Japan's fighting for their lives. Just trying to tap this back and sit in front of it. They'd love a little redirection, and they get it. That's actually really good. Yeah, good shot, good result. 
It's a perfect pocket for uh, Japan. And uh, of course, China is going to try and remove the yellow, but I think they'll be very, very happy if they can try and remove uh, one of the red stones as well. Yeah, China, all they're thinking is we just need to score in this end. We don't need two, we don't need three. One would be enough. But by pushing those two red stones behind the button, Morozumi has created a pocket for himself. Xiao Ming Zhu saying, well, uh, you've got the draw weight in your pocket. Why not just drill it on the lid? Zhang Zhilang saying, are you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> We're up two. Yeah, just make the nose hit here, really. Even if the yellow stone sticks around, just make sure it gets out of the forefoot and um, you rip one of the back reds. Yeah, about the only bad result is crossing the face massively here and jamming it on that stone on the right-hand side of the back forefoot, but all things oh, considered, wow. that's a pretty low risk. Safely chips it out, but now the pocket is available for Morozumi to freeze too. The question is if he, if he perfectly glues it on the back uh, stones, will the pin be open for uh, Dure? I think so. I think he's going to have to leave a tiny gap to. Because I think you're right, Sander. If he did weld it completely to those back red stones, the pin would be available for Lou Ray, and we've seen that he can draw the lid. <laughs> I think that's what he's saying, more than me. Saying, freeze uh, it, but leave it just a, a tiny gap. Tiny gap. And almost freeze. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty. Uh, well, it's going to be down to the sweepers to get it there. So, first, uh, Yosuke Morizumi is going to have to throw a rock with some good potential, and uh, then it's down to uh, the front end to really carry it all the way there. Yeah, they're going to have to sweep it to a very specific spot. There you get a great look at it from the side angle. Wants to be in front of those two Chinese stones, but not in contact with them. So if Ryu does hit the stone, Japan would still be shot and steal the end. Well, made, made this draw perfect uh, in the last end. In turn draw to the one foot. It's looking just a tad heavy, perhaps. See if it uh, slows down at the end. These interns have really been finishing hard as they come to rest, but makes contact. Actually so now a decision here for the Chinese. Do you just hammer that yellow one on the nose and pop it out and score one that way, or do you just draw on top of it and take your one? I think it uh, looks like a hit. I think the hit's pretty easy here, actually. Just uh, nose or anywhere high, and sh you should be scoring. Could be, could almost could be, be a, a block high. here. I was going to say, if he hit it a bit <laughs> high side, you could potentially blank the end as well. well depending on uh, how hard he throws it, naturally. So this could potentially be game over right here. Final stone about to come here on end number nine for... Lou Ray of China. Yasuke Morozumi can only watch and hope. And there it goes sideways out of the house and it's a score of one for China. So, mission accomplished for the Chinese. They would have loved the deuce, but they just really wanted to score. But still some hope here for the Japanese. There we see contact point scatters all the stones and chips the stone out at the back as well. And I think that's the one they were hoping would stick around for their second point, but it just picks and rolls. Japanese stone goes sideways out of this house, but it's one point for China, and they take a three-point lead into the 10th and final end. It's China 7. Japan four. No, 
So no fooling around here for Team China with a three-point lead on the 10th end. Sang Jilang being asked to just throw it through the house. Kosuke Morizumi, absolutely critical here. Down three that Japan makes both guards in the free guard zone part of the end. There's the first one, halfway, that's perfect. Great stone there by Morozumi. Now, will we see the attempted tick or will the Chinese just throw it through again? Looks like they're just gonna throw it through. They could always try to tick, really. Just well, with a really controlled weight. No real downside to trying it, I suppose, but. It's a pretty, uh, Pretty tough shot to make if you're going to throw that hard. So now Morozumi looking for a corner guard on the other side of the sheet. Japan with the last rock here in the 10th and final end. They need three to tie this up and send us to an extra end. Seems unlikely, but if you were with us yesterday, we saw Korean women down three against former world champion Huang Bin Yu. And they got that three into the extra end and then improbably running the Chinese out of clock and stealing the win. Hey, Mark. Mark. Whoa, whoa. Clears one and nearly makes, takes the other one out as well. So good first clear there by Xiao Chang. Uh, you know, when, when they're that flat, it's, uh, I don't think you should be tempted to play the double. Like he catches that a hair thicker. He has to make contact with the other one, but he doesn't remove it. So we end up with two corner guards on the one side. So yeah. unless it's a steep angle, I think you just stick to your single peel. Japan having to play the patience game now. They no, they need three, and so hopeful of having two guards to use. Lu Ray asking Zhao again to remove one of them. Oh, I did flash one of the peels, uh, corner guard peels, early in the game. Sure did. I think he's adjusted now, though. Two good shots. Yep, good execution there by the Chinese second player. Basically, just gonna have to uh, hope for a miss here, Japan. One more corner guard ordered up by Yusuke Morozumi. At some point, they're gonna have to come around one of these guards. They do need three. <laughs> I believe we could just say handshakes in the background there between Qatar and Hong Kong. Qatar actually picked up uh, three points in one end. Hong Fantastic. Kong. Fantastic. Just losing out five to nine. That's outstanding. Here we do see in the background the teams from Qatar and Hong Kong posing for a photo. First time ever that a Qatar men's fours team has competed internationally. Very much new to the sport. Learning, but awesome that they're here competing. So nice execution here by the Chinese in the 10th end. Just trying to run the Japanese out of rocks. And now Morozumi has no choice. Time to go around that one guard that you've got. Tsuru Shimizu. Nine, 
Sweepers think it's deep in the house. Being deep in the house isn't necessarily a bad thing because you're going to need to stack them up somehow if you can. Okay. Do Ray knows the guard is the only thing that's going to beat them. So he asks Zhaming to just remove it. That's a textbook end so far by the Chinese. Morizumi now has to draw the open side and hope for a complete miss by the Chinese. Surprised they don't just throw a guard again here. There are three stones to come, so you could guard and hope for a chance to draw around it twice. Just figure to be uh, it's more likely for them to uh, miss a guard with a nose hit than miss the stone in the house completely. But uh, chances are pretty slim either way. You're going to need a complete miss of some variety here. So no rush here for Lou Ray. There is a really flat crosshouse double that could end the game on this shot, but I don't think he's even thinking about that. Happy just to remove one of the Japanese stones and then leave himself an open hit for the win. Does in fact remove the Japanese stone. So Morozumi now has to come into the rings. Japan needs three to tie. Looking to draw, probably tuck a corner around that red stone, but. The Chinese will almost certainly ignore that and elect to hit the stone in the open. Needs to stay in the house. It does, but looks like China's second shot. Yep. But that doesn't matter. Chinese will play a hit at the open stone. So Lu Ray heads down to the hack knowing that if he hits any piece of this Japanese stone, the victory will go to China. Morozumi and Shimizu know it too. Whoa. Whoa. Last rock on its way for Please. Lou Ray. He's already putting on his glove. He knows he's made it. Removes the Japanese stone and game over. Victory for Team China, a really impressive game from the Chinese. One red will make the final score. Eight to four for Team China, taking them to a 3-0 and record, unbeaten in this round robin, and a huge victory over their uh, fierce rivals from Japan. So it's been a bit of a dodgy game, all up and down. We had a few players out there, with, not with our best game of the week, but I think there certainly one player that uh, hold his own, and that was uh, Lou Ray. 
he was really solid. He's been gone for two years, but it didn't really look like it today. He uh, he made pretty much everything, and uh, I think he was a key factor for the win for China today. No, I couldn't agree more, Sander. A really good performance there by the Chinese skip. Back with a vengeance. And there we see the final score line. That point in the 10th end not counted because they did run the Japanese out of rock. So the final score, China 7, Japan 4 here at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships. Play in the fourth end in this top of the table match. China versus Japan. Chinese skip Lu Ray with a delicate draw to the button to score two, giving his Chinese team a three to one lead after the fourth end of play. Then on end number five, Japan's Yasuki Morizumi can't nose this to get two, so he has to play a bit of a carom shot hits it perfectly and squirts his own stone into the eight foot to tie up the match. Great shot there by Morizumi and it's tied after three. But then the decisive seventh end after a missed run back, a chance here for Lou Ray just has to draw for a piece of the eight foot to give his team a huge lead in this game and he makes it perfectly putting it into the four foot. Huge three point end for China giving them a six to three lead. Then in the eighth facing four Chinese counters. Yosuke Morizumi trying to stay in the game makes a great draw of his own drilling it onto the T line. Japan stays alive, but they're trailing at six to four. And then the Chinese team running the Japanese out of rocks in the 10th end to claim the victory. Final score, China seven, Japan four, and China continues their unbeaten run here at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships. There we see confirmation of that final. China taking it out seven to four in the fourth session of the men's tournament here at the Pacific Asia Curling Championships in Wisong, Korea. As these teams carry along the road to the 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Waiting for that to set up. We can recap some of the action from the game today as well as key for position now. Two of these countries of the nine will qualify for the World Men's Curling Championships later in April 2017 in Edmonton, Canada. And that's really important, but what's particularly important is the chance to earn qualifying points for their countries to qualify in for the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang. So every player here trying to get their country into the Olympics. So now we're standing by to have a chat with, I'm sure, a very happy winning Chinese skip, Lu Ray. All right, so three wins for China. How, uh, how do you feel about your team and how they're playing so far? Uh, 
？呃，虽然说比赛已经三场了吧，但是后面还有更艰苦的比赛等待我们，我们只是一场一场去打就可以。We just play uh, one uh, and one game, and because we have the, uh, some more games, we're still not playing, but the team playing well. There's a few missed shots today, and it didn't seem like everyone was uh, on top form. Was there any reason for that? Uh, which one? Like, uh, it seemed like both the teams were missing more shots than usual. Was there a reason for it? For it? No, I said today, two teams have a lot of mistakes. What is the reason for this mistake? 呃，我感觉两个队伍中间环节有点失误吧，但是我感觉并不影影响后后期的比赛吧。我感觉就是每个人调整吧，双方队伍调整，就是再加强一些吧。So uh, both team uh, has playing uh, try too hard, and uh, the uh, the second and third for both team uh, play some mistakes during the game, but the the player is, uh, is trying to adjustment to uh, play well. Uh, you had a break from curling for a couple of years, but today I think you were the best player on the ice. So how does it feel to be back? Uh,其实他们上最好吧。我感觉就是大家都在一个起跑线上吧。我感觉就是也许说就是大赛经验比他们稍微多一些吧。但是我感觉我们的水平其实都差不多。我感觉回到这个赛场上，我非常高兴，